Hey guys, so today we'll be adding a new gun. As you can see, this is it, it's the bomb glove. So yeah, no real mechanics yet because we're just going to add about eight to nine guns so we can fill up the whole roster thingy. And then we'll start making the mechanics, we'll start making the animations, we will start making VFX, aka eye candy. So yeah, first things first. I made uh, a new key binding in project settings called save game which bind to key K and also shift the stick so we can't like uh, press it by accident now I'd like to tell you two stuff I made so I made an icon which is this bomb glove thing it's pretty basic just a circle with a fuse and you know well that and I imported that into the engine just normally and the other thing I want to say is where your save games are located so if I go on my project which is Ratchet and Clank Toots and I go under saved and save games I'm going to find a bunch of .sa files we actually use them to save if you remember so if you want to test something that is a is and it's not saved you can just delete it from here click play so, for example, if I click play, you can see that it got loaded as a bomb glove. Bomb glove, excuse me. But if I go ahead and delete all of these, so hit play, I'll just have weapons. And if I go there to my our ep equip bomb glove uh, trigger box right there, so you can see it's green. boom weapon given now i can do this and if i hit g i can equip it again i can equip an, a random weapon which do nothing and then the bomb will go if i don't save look at this it's gone but if i go again equip it oh i get an already owned error just because i did not save it but the weapon is already initialized which means it's already in our bank of weapons and we don't get to regrab it. So if I delete that, go ahead and here, and then I can fire it there. Hit Shift and K, which is game saved. Then hit Escape, play again, boom, bomb gloves there. So I'm going to delete all of them, and I'm going to show you how I did it. So. I went ahead and created a bomb glove class, a bomb glove ammo class, and the icon which I imported. And the bomb glove ammo has a pardon class of, uh, you know, the weapon ammo which we created previously. And the bomb, <coughs> excuse me, the bomb glove class has a pardon class of uh, the weapon class we created earlier. That's why this pardon happened. So I did some stuff. All the other events are actually handled by the w weapon pardon class so we don't want to care about them we just override the ones we want to override so on our begin play we just call parents begin play and then we set some properties based on the level so for example i would want my max ammo to change as soon as the level progresses this is the place i will do them and we also overridden the event fire set the if check if the ammo is greater than zero negate then shoot bomb which we are going to implement in another tutorial and then just print a string so we can see something happening now we can also alter the damage that the bomb uh, the actual bomb does we're going to do that inside here with a shrink on int again so bear in mind i've changed some defaults so if we click up there we will see the default so level one max level three that's why i've got this switch on it right there so our weapon ammo class should be bomb glove ammo i forgot to do that i changed the weapon name to bomb glove and the icon to, bo to bomb glove icon so that's the way we're going to add a new weapon in the game but okay we had the new class we had the ammo which if we go there you will see that i have the quantity max and quantity min set to 10 and 5 based on the weapon ammo of course so how do we get our player to equip it so as you can see i've got a text here and a trigger box right there so i set 
I named it Bone Glove Trigger Box. If we open up our level blueprint, I've bound this to an event. So create the reference, bind to an event, equip Bone Glove. So we try to get the actor that overlap the actual trigger box and we check if he owns the weapon. If not, we will give him the weapon. If he already owns the weapon, if he has it equipped or if it's on our bank here of save files, we just print the weapons already on. Now, these two functions are the new ones, which I'm going to explain right now. So, I did many stuff to our third person character again. So, let's see, right there, our input uh, save. First things first, the shift in K I talked about earlier calls the save method we created previous tutorial. So I made a couple of additions. So first things first, with the weapon name to class, I added a new pin, and if the name is bomb glove, we return the bomb glove class. So we've got a link to this class right there, which we don't need open anymore. So I'm going to close it. Then we've got the owns weapon. So Based on the weapon name, if you've got a save file for the weapon, so if we've created the weapon b before, if we've fabricated it and equipped it, thus creating a save file, because that's what we do on the, on the begin play or when we save the game, we actually save the state of each weapon. So if the, if the weapon has a saved state, we just return if it's got a save state or not. So that's basically it, how we check if the player has acquired the weapon, not even equipping it, just acquiring it. So, then our gun roster in it and give weapon class. So, yeah, this is basically the same thing, I guess. Yep. But, I want to talk about something that is, that I like to call an extra layer of safety. So, Cedric Hexy. Uh, suggestion on the forms that I use the is valid node so you know sometimes stuff can go wrong and the current weapon variable may be indeed empty so when we try to do all this thing we get an error and the game crashes and we're left with a dissatisfied player that thinks our game is crap so we're going to check if the current weapon is valid just before we set its visibility and detach it from an actor if any that is attached so yeah use that we should uh, probably use this uh while checking for array indexes but as soon as we've got a tight organization on our game and there are not other people fiddling around with our code we shouldn't have problems so yeah that's pretty much so on our give weapon now two stuff are taking place on this sequence first things first we check if our weapon roster is empty if it has an empty slot, for, for example, we check if the we look through it and we check uh, for each uh, element if its weapon name is weapon. That means it's just a dual class. It doesn't do nothing. So we can replace it with a real weapon, with something something like the bomb glove or the seeker missile or s stuff that we're going to add in the future. So I've added two local variable variables that are actually related to each other via this part right there so if we find a slot that has a dull weapon inside we finish the loop by breaking it but uh, before doing that we set our index that we're going to insert our new weapon new newly acquired weapon that we're going to give to the player to the empty index and then we set the weapon roster to not full but by default it's full as you can see right there so then we check if it's full or if it's not if the weapon roster is full we want to equip the weapon but do not change the circle ri right there we don't w we don't want this change because it's the configuration that the player has already chose to use which we're going to make editable later if you've ever played ratchet and clank so but we want to equip the weapon because it's a new toy that the player has and we must present it to him show show him how to do it maybe play some tutorial voiceover maybe not so but if there are plenty or even one dual weapon slot we should uh, update the circle and add the icon so the new co it's a new configuration for the player 
So, let's get into it. First things first, if our weapon roster is full. No, actually we're going to go on false. We're going to get a weapon uh, class from its name right there. And spawn the actor on the transform. Make it hidden. Set the array element of weapon roster of MD index based on the weapon we just made right there. That's the line if you can see. So, then hit a gun equip with the MD index. We just equip the gun. Remember this logic from the previous tutorials. Then we save the weapon. So, there is a weapon uh, name save file created right there. And then we update the brushes. Now, I will cover that in the end, but it actually just grabs a new icon for each element. So, on our circular weapon picker. Now, if the weapon roster is full, we actually do the same thing, but we call a uh, custom event that I made that it's a new one and it's called gun equip no roster. So, we don't want to update the roster, but we do save the weapon and we do update the brushes afterwards. So, <coughs> gun equip no roster. Let's check it. The first part is the same as this, so we grab the previous weapon, detach it and set visibility. But before doing that, we check if it's valid, because we don't want our app to crash. And then, <coughs> we set the current weapon to the newly assigned weapon right there. We attach it to the actor, and we just set it to visible. Bear in mind, we do not do this part that we get uh, an index and set the weapon like that. We just set it and if the player hits G and hits the gun equip, this is going to actually get destroyed from the garbage collector and then we are just going to have our normal roster. But the player, just because there is a save file right there, because we saved the, the weapon, he's going to be able to load his, uh, new, his weapon in a new configuration. So, we should probably, on the give weapon, call the save as well, so it uh, happens automatically. And there we go. Now, about the update brushes. So, this is on our circular weapon picker. What actually happens is, I just got, went on the event graph and collapsed this last part onto a function, so now each time we call it, it's going to just update the icons, so if we just go here, grab the bomb glove, fire a couple of times, there we go, the icons got updated. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Next one we're going to do the Omni wrench probably, maybe do a couple of additions, enhancements, etc. Maybe make this an actor, so we can like place it anywhere. See you next time guys.